So it's been a good run, but this is the last video in the series of Revit to Real. And so finishing out a model um, usually for me includes detail work, entourage, uh, a few things like that. So let's look really quickly at some tricks to add in a few detail components, um, stairs, people, and a tree. And then I'll, the, the, particularly the large scale model, the 16th, doesn't have a road or anything like that in it. But the same trick would add in cars, um, site fixtures, some things along those lines. So let's start by adding in a staircase. Um, and we'll look at how you would modify a Revit stair to make it a printable stair. So I'm just going to start just using the uh, a standard stair 711 um, in an L shape. So just build something quick like that. And you can see what that gives us in default in 3D is uh, something with a bit too much detail to print and also um, something that the printer in general is going to struggle with. Uh, I always talk about uh, FDM printing is happy to um, span over the top of something. It is not happy to cantilever. So something like this, uh, it might be able to stack it up a little bit, but when you get to an edge that's hanging like this edge over here, it really needs something over it to be able to print correctly, uh, especially when we get down to something as fine and detailed as a 16th inch model. The other thing, a stare at a 16th inch model is a pretty ridiculous thing to, to even think about. Um, back in school, we at 16th inch, we quit trying to model the stairs and usually did a ramp with lines on it or something like that. But the MakerBot's perfectly happy um, doing a stair as long as you turn it into something that is uh, reasonably easy to print. So typically what I do is whatever stair I have modeled, one of the first things that I do is turn it into a monolithic stair. So that gives me something that is geometry that is much more reasonable to work with. The next thing that I'll do is, you know, I usually don't have a lot happening in a model underneath the stairs. Even if there's something going on, um, you know, that's it, something I usually feel like I can fill in. Now, if you have a floating staircase, something that's in the middle of a larger open lobby space, I would set that up so it's actually printing an edge up and divide the stair into a couple of different pieces and do it that way. But for a stair that's just sort of moving within a stairwell or something along those lines, something where the space underneath the stair doesn't matter, which is probably 90% of the stairs, um, the trick that I use next is just adding a component underneath the staircase itself. So let's go ahead and finish those stairs out. The um, handrail, um, way too much detail for something like that. Again, I could build a wall to work with them, but we'll just go ahead and hide them for this particular detail. So I'm going to go model in place, generic model, and I'm going to set my work plane as the inside edge of this particular stair and build an extrusion by tracing those lines right there and then I can draw a line right across the base to the top trim it out and then simply move it in the correct direction and snap it to the edge. So now I have a base built for that stair. Exact same trick, but for the next uh, portion of the stair, I'm going to set my work plane, this time to be this edge of the staircase, trace the lines, and then trim those lines together. I need one more vertical line right there. Trim. Finish, and then set the extrusion to run edge to edge. So that is a stair now that is completely ready to print. 
So the next trick is adding in a scale figure. Now to 16th, um, printing a scale figure is uh, pretty ridiculous. So if you're dead set on doing it, you're going to get more of a two-dimensional um, flat Stanley kind of entourage scale figure. If scale figures are super important to you, buy them. Um, but here is the trick that I've used to get them printed out of our Rep2. Um, I'm going to go to uh, Insert, Import CAD, and from SketchUp, I went ahead and grabbed the uh, just the line work of one of their entourage figures. I believe that's Sophie from the uh, latest version of SketchUp. And we're going to rotate Sophie around so that she matches up close to our staircase there. Actually going to rotate her 90 degrees so that she faces this staircase. One more time here. Slightly larger surface to work on. Okay, so there is Sophie. And again, I'm going to use a model in place generic component. I'm going to set my reference plane as that edge. And what I'm going to do is really, really quickly, without looking at a lot of detail, because again, working at a 16th inch, so you could really just overshoot the level of detail that you're going to get. I'm going to trace the basic outline And note when I'm saying basic, I am meaning basic. Outline of Sophie on that wall. I can now finish that. And you know that extrusion, the depth on that piece needs to be about one foot. So I know that this is the correct height. It's about one foot thick. I'm really not going to get gaps in the arm, anything like that. It's just not going to give me that kind of detail. Not without a lot of practice and, let's also say, probably a lot of invention. But that's going to start to give me a scale figure that I can start to place in and around. If you notice, I accidentally moved that vertically. That would be a bad thing when it goes to the printer. Let's go ahead and undo that a few times so it's back up where it should be. And this time when I move, I'm going to make sure that I disjoin that from the wall. It really doesn't want me to do that at all. We'll just leave it there for right now. That will be just fine and dandy. I'll isolate it when I export it. So I've got those two pieces ready to go. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hide this element in the view. Add-ins, STL exporter, save, Revit, stair. Unhide and view elements. Isolate element, STL exporter, save, Revit, Sophie. So the last piece is trees. Um, Revit trees, not going to cut it at all, just to be honest. So I'm going to jump over to 3D Studio Max because, um, you know, the, the foliage in Max, the default foliage, isn't the best, but there is a reasonably good tool um, to start making some basic trees, again, especially when we're looking at that 16th inch level of detail. So what I'm going to do is bring in a default American Elm. drag and drop it right into place, and actually just go ahead and make a few of them. Um, one of the nice things about this is each one that you make is going to be different um, because it's randomly generating the tree parameters and the tree shape. And if you notice, I've already set the tree to have a certain kind of criteria. So each tree, if we look at it, is set to a low level of detail and always have the canopy on. Let's look at the difference really quick. If I 
uh, the default it's going to come in with a high level of detail and it's going to have the canopy mode set to when not selected and the pruning is going to be set to zero so we get a tree that looks something like this um, that is not going to print at all you know no prayer of that printing so um, I really want just sort of the lollipop version of this tree so I'm going to go ahead and set the canopy to always the level of detail to low and what the pruning does the pruning simply brings the bottom of that canopy up a bit for me so I'm not going to walk through the next couple of steps with each tree but the next thing is I, I know that I have on the project I've got about six trees total uh, varying heights um, and I know one of them is only 15 feet so before I start doing anything uh, typically what I do is make sure I have enough trees and the right kind of variety the right kind of varying height but in working through a few steps to get these ready to print um, and a few steps to modify them to look exactly like I want them to for the site um, let's, I'm going to change my view from orthographic to perspective here one of the problems that you're going to see right away is typically these trees have a great big void in the bottom of them and you can see that right here so I need to go in and do just a little bit of work with that and I know this flat surface isn't going to print very well for me and the trees for the site I actually want to squish them in a little bit more um, a wider trunk and a slightly smaller canopy so let's look at doing that really quick some really easy steps inside of 3D Studio Max to make that happen so what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert the tree by right clicking on it selecting it right clicking on it and converting it to an editable mesh I'm going to go into polygon selection mode and I'm going to select all of these upper polygons like that and I'm going to scale them or not the polygons but actually the points so that's the point or vertex selection I'm going to scale all of those in about the X and Y axis and if you notice it's bringing in the trunk too I don't care it's going to be lost there in the canopy so I'm not worried about that and this is just an aesthetic decision by me I like the look of that kind of tree a little bit better still a little bit weird and goofy I don't like this flat point at the top either I know that's gonna print kind of weird so let's pick that point right there and move it up just a little bit call me picky alrighty so the next thing I want to do is I've got to collapse this huge open space at the bottom a bit so I'm gonna use that exact same selection tool and select this bottom ring of vertex pieces so I'm gonna select those And those so that's everything around the bottom of the tree and again I'm going to scale those in about the X axis and the Y axis uh, I don't need to get them perfectly matching the trunk I just need to get them close uh, the maker wear will go ahead and say oh there's a gap there we can go ahead and fill it in for you it's usually pretty good at doing things like that and I'm going to slide this down just a little bit as well just to make that transition a little bit easier for the printer um, you know about 60 degrees as an angle is pretty reliable a little bit less than that or a little bit more than that uh, won't work quite as well you get some draping of the filament and the last thing I'm going to do is uh, increase the width of the trunk so I'm just going to spread that out and spread that out and that's also just a logistical reason of getting this print to work a little bit better need to do this group right here as well so just really really fast just getting a couple of these and you can see how quickly you could generate a lot of different trees so you're not cotton balls on toothpicks or something like that you're actually getting custom different unique trees for an entire project select this group right here one more time pull them down just a little bit more so that's a really quick tree that I have ready to go uh, and the next thing that I need to do I'm gonna go out of vertex selection mode And remember this is a one-to-one -one tree inside of 3d studio max so before I export this I might as well just go ahead and scale the whole guy down um, by my sixteenth inch scale factor so again if I look at my Excel spreadsheet that is at base scale factor so I'm uh, at a sixteenth inch scale multiplied by my uh, feet to inches conversion here uh, and I'm 
0.52%. So absolute transform 0.52 will give me a tree that is a 16th inch scale tree now. So I'm ready to go ahead and big M export to my desktop tree entourage. So this is just one, again, uh, making multiples of these. I uh, sit down and do that in a couple of minutes for sure. So let's go into MakerWare again. New version. Add. And we are going to add in our tree entourage. Keep size. Move to platform. Scale. Again, 3ds Max works in inches. MakerWare works in millimeters. So there's my conversion factor right there, inches to millimeters. Add in the Revit stair. Use my scale factor of 158.69 that we've been using throughout to convert the Revit scale to a 16th inch. Oh except it would be a really good thing to not have the tree selected when I type that in. Select the stair, scale factor 158.69. So now we have a tree going up two levels. So that should be about a third of the height of the tree, and it is. So those two things look like they're communicating really well, right, the right scale across the board there. And let's add in Sophie as well. Revit Sophie. Selecting Sophie, scale 158.69. So let's run the control L to organize everything on the platform so that it can build it as fast as possible. Make no supports low setting, preview, export. So those guys are ready. So I've got an entourage scale figure, stairs, um, and again uh, if things are set up correctly you should just be able to do that with the existing stairs. Uh, typically I would isolate them in a view, print them out, and place them directly into the model. And all of those pieces are ready to go. So the final export, let's call this Entourage and save. So the Entourage files are done and completely out of the MakerBot. You can see that the scale figure and sta stair have printed and uh, it's a reminder that at a 16th inch scale there is not much detail. The objects are really small so be aware of your level of detail as you're working. On the tree it printed perfectly except for just a few little strands of filament. Um, just pop those off with some needle nose pliers um, or something along those lines and then hit it with sandpaper. Grab some coffee and get ready to start gluing.